So why don't you just skip the regulation and give all the sovereignty back to people who have rightfully established that record and are the true owners of it? And that's a question. Yeah, so so it's really, a, you know, in the end, from my perspective, it's really a cost benefit thing is that if, let's say, we protect all health data and never use it without your consent, we yeah. may be losing a part of our uh, population that we serve. They won't be receded because they're not used to being whipped around or abused for the information that they create. And we see this with the millions of people that use our system today. When given the option, when maximum restriction is put on the business and maximum flexibility given to the consumer in terms of their data sovereignty, they are more than willing almost 98% of the time to do the sharing now that they have the choice. And it hasn't actually inhibit, inhibited the ability for medical research, financial research, market research to do their thing, because now they can engage with Professor Solomon and say, hey, we respect you. We understand it's your data. We would like to do the right thing. And I would like to request it from you. And I almost guarantee you will do it every single time. And it's not I just about the right, uh, right away. Yeah, and so I want to acknowledge we have a new panelist as well, Paula, who yeah, just joined yeah. us. Um, and I want to hear her voice come in. But it's not just about the right, it's about transparency, about what's mm -hmm. going to happen with that data. In the case of Cambridge Analytica, the individual privacy is 100% maintained. However, the models built off of 30 million people's data enabled a essentially a psychological study that could figure out how to manipulate specific populations. And there are solutions to, to these things as we develop and support decentralized identity and the power to secure one's own identity and data and choose to opt in or out of what we're sharing and what we're allowing to be used in specific ways. And if there's requirements for how that data is going to be used, then we actually are starting to regain power over that conversation around whether you can switch between being a helper and a and a help seeker uh, uh, and this has grown to the thousands so um as you can see like um there's a lot happening around me right now but um i'm trying to handle the growth of the platform and um yeah i'm just gonna mute myself for a moment take care of this for two minutes and then i'll be right back when it's more quiet but, oh, um, thank you very much, Paula. Hope, no problem. I hope we you got a little children. bit of my background there. Yeah, absolutely. That was excellent. And actually, Paula brought up a really interesting point that we haven't really hit on, uh, and that's the the sort of intrinsic relationship between data and the individual. And while we talk about sovereignty, and we've been talking about a little bit about the right to grant access to data. Uh, Alexander, in particular, given your sort of enlightenment based approach to uh, sovereignty and the individual and sort of the, the uh, intellectual history from which we all have risen, I'm curious about the ability to rescind the granting of permission. 